The first part of this module covered the concept of regression in the supervised learning paradigm. But as you might remember from previous modules, we also talk about classification quite a bit. As with many problem settings, there is not this one and only algorithm designed to solve it, but there are actually many, many different ones. Some very popular examples are distant-based methods, such as k-nearest neighbors and Bayesian methods like naive Bayes. Unfortunately, however, we cannot put everything into this course, which is why we will only talk about one, but very popular, simple and performant algorithm, the decision trees. I briefly introduced the idea of decision trees in some of the previous modules already, but let's take a closer look now. All right, let's also start with a very simple example of classifying animal species again. We will take dogs, cats and birds once again to create a dataset containing different individuals of each species. As we have talked about it in module 2, this kind of data can be represented in various ways, for example pictures. For our purpose of this example, we want to translate it into a tabular form. For our table, we first need to define what features or attributes we want to use to describe our dataset. Can you think of any descriptive features? Alright, let's say we want to have a feature for number of legs, height, weight and shape of ears. Decision trees are a type of rule-based algorithm. The simplest form of this would be the 1R algorithm, which tries to separate data using only one rule. Now, what is a rule? A rule is, simply speaking, nothing more than an if-then-else statement. As a comparison, expert systems from the 1980s are also rule-based, but they did not learn from data, however. Okay, to build a decision tree, we will just nest several rules after each other, similar to how a search tree would work. At each rule or node of the tree, we create a split for the possible answers and continue to do so until we are satisfied with our tree. But what does it mean to be satisfied with our tree? The decision tree algorithm looks for a descriptive feature of our dataset, which splits the data points into different classes. This split should make a little, as little errors as possible, but we cannot guarantee that we make zero errors. In real-world datasets, this is actually rather unusual. Looking at our example data set of dogs, cats and birds, what do you think would be a good feature to start with? Well, let's pick weight as a first example. While well, we could argue that dogs are usually bigger than cats and birds and design a rule that says if weight is larger than 20 kilo, then it's a dog, there can still be some types of birds or even cats that also fall into this category. So this sounds good as a starting point, but maybe we can find a better split. So let's look at number of legs. We design a rule that says if number of legs is less than four, then it is a bird. If we assume that no cat or dog is missing one or more of its limbs, this sounds like a decent split that is able to separate birds from cats and dogs. But now we have to continue. In case the data point has less than four legs, do we need any further split? We can check with our training dataset how many errors we would make. And considering our example dataset, we would make zero errors with classifying birds. So this branch sounds good. But what for the else case, which means if our data point has four or more legs, we can now either classify as dog or cat, but as it applies to both, we will always misclassify one of the classes. So let's pick shape of ears as a next feature to split the data. Our feature comes with pointy and round as possible values. So we are asking for the shape of the ear and split into two branches, one for pointy and one for round. I would argue now that most cats have pointy ears, while many dogs have round ears, which is why I propose to classify pointy ears as cat and round ears as dog. You probably disagree with me here that this is a perfect split, but looking at our available features, this might be the best we have. So if we now look at our decision tree, we can now see how the algorithm will classify new data points. A new data point is inserted to our tree, and we start asking the first question, do we have less than four legs? As our data point is another dog, we take the branch for four or more legs. We then continue to ask about the shape of the ear. Oh well, it looks like our dog actually has pointy ears, which means that the decision tree arrives at a leaf node that classifies it as a cat. Well, as mentioned before, we cannot always have the perfect model. The quality of the tree that is built depends on multiple factors, such as available features, data quality and completeness, but also on the splitting criteria but more on this in the next video.